slide, how do you accurately measure the pay gap? And there are two parts to this. First, this slide highlights four elements that are ne necessary foundations, the necessary foundations for an accurate pay equity analysis. So the first is knowing the difference between a gap and a disparity. The pay gap <clears throat> is the overall average pay difference between protected classes, such as men and women, before controlling for business factors that determine pay. The portion of the gap that is not explained by business factors is the pay disparity. Pay disparity can reflect a pay discrimination liability. <clears throat> okay, the business factors, it's important, I put here that, that, the, that, uh, that, the, that these factors might be considered tainted. I just wanted to talk about that for a moment. That, that business factors uh, explain any portion of the overall pay gap between protected classes means that these factors are not balanced across protected classes. The larger the gap that is explained by business factors and the fewer the factors that explain that gap, the more likely they reflect non-wage discrimination and may be considered to be factors that are tainted by discrimination. Um, okay, then moving on to the next point, uh, we've, we've hit this a few times, investment in data is critical to accurate results. The cleaner and more comprehensive the data on factors are, the more likely those factors are to reduce or eliminate pay disparities. <clears throat> okay, uh, then a couple of things that, that uh, uh, Joanna mentioned, pay analysis groups, they have to be suffi of sufficient size, both to make accurate measurements and to be meaningfully distinct from each other. Uh, and then we, 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 I've also t touched on this idea of tainted factors and the degree to which they are <clears throat> aligned with protected classes is really um, where, where they can fall from the analysis because they're just too, too strongly aligned with protected classes. Okay, um, so that's the foundation. If we move on to the next slide. <clears throat> right, so with that foundation uh, in place, accuracy of a pay gap analysis depends on the balance between robustness and precision. Uh, so and at the bottom here, I just uh, highlighting those last two bullet points that robustness is, is a driver of making analyses larger, <clears throat> that they, they have, have to have more moving parts to them to, to a pay equity audit, whereas precision works in the opposite direction. That's why a balance has to be struck um, using various statistical measures uh, between those two forces, and that, that is what, where, where accuracy lies in the midpoint between uh, a, ba a balance of robustness and precision. Another important point, though, <clears throat> is that regression, as we've already alluded to, is, is prim the primary tool, a useful tool, a useful tool for measuring how much of the gap is explained by business factors and how much is left over as pay disparities, and as well for validating if factors actually explain significant wage variation. Reliable regression analyses must reflect three components, that the, the, the specifics of the firm's compensation philosophy, a careful understanding of what the available data represent, and the relevant jurisdictional differences in which the firm operates. Okay, so that's just sort of a, an overview of, of what um, uh, you should be looking for in terms of an accurate pay equity audit.